to visit with our good friend Kim Bear to talk about something that a lot of people discuss on a regular basis, especially if you are changing jobs and whether or not you have the ability to leave one job, Jackie, and go to another one automatically. It's called non-compete clauses that you might have in part of your contract uh, with an employer. And uh, the biggest question that we talk about, Jackie, from a lot of people's standpoint is, can a non-compete clause uh, be enacted here in the state of Iowa? Well, let's break it down, Kim. Thank you for joining us this morning. Sure. What does non-compete mean and yes. how many people does this really affect? I know because we're in the biz, we throw this term around a lot, but what right. exactly is a non-compete? Yeah, so what, excellent question. So what a non-compete is, is it is a contractual agreement that says that if, I'll just give you an example, let's okay. say that, that I work for Lou and I, we work in the shoe business and, mm -hmm. and I'm a salesperson. Uh, and so when Lou hires me, he says, you know, hey, I'm going to give you uh, information about my suppliers and my pricing and my customer list. So I want you to sign a non-compete. And so what a non-compete says is, and it, we would look at your written employment agreement. So a non-compete, first of all, has to be in writing. Okay. So you got that's how you would go find to see whether or not you have one. Right. So if you have one, um, the intent is, is that when I leave Lou, let's say he either fires me or I quit, mm -hmm. that I'm not going to go over to Jackie's shoe store and start Start, um, and say, hey, Jackie, I got all of Lou's customer list. I've got mm -hmm. all of his pricing. Let's go put, try and put him out of business. So that's really what it's designed to do. It's designed to protect Lou's interest for a reasonable amount of time um, so that I, you know, I, I don't, I can't basically steal his information and go compete against him. Okay, now what do they consider a reasonable amount of time? Well, that's a good question too. So there's not really any set, um, you can look, look at the case, it's not really any set amount of time. Um, typically, what I see is usually a year to two years. Um, sometimes if, if we're selling a business, you know, because they come into play then too. Let's say that um, that you own a, a shirt business. Let's say you own something similar to Ray Gun and mm -hmm. it's doing, going great guns and, you, and I want to buy it. If I'm going to buy it from you, I probably want to make sure that you're not going to go down the street and open up another competing mm -hmm. t-shirt company. And so in the, in the purchase agreement, I may say, now Lou, I want you to agree that for the next five years or seven years, you're not going to go compete with me. So we do see some that are five, seven years. I don't think I've seen much longer than seven years. That, that doesn't mean that it, it couldn't be enforceable, but typically what we see is one to two years. And how often is this, does this come up? Like, is this a common thing? Because uh, I feel like it's not a term that's normally just thrown out there. It, it's not. I mean, so, so for instance, you know, uh, at a lot of places where, you know, so, you know, restaurants, fast food, um, uh, there's lots of industries where um, the employer typically does not use a non-compete. Mm -hmm. But when you start getting into sales or when you start getting into, let's say um, there's a famous case um, involving trade secrets uh, involving um, the tavern pizza. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And so in that particular case, what they were concerned about was um, the, the sauce recipe because it was an old family recipe. So really it's, it's kind of industry specific, but it also is kind of case specific. So for instance, industry specific um, you know a lot of um, medical salespeople uh, you know uh, they usually have uh, non-competes a lot of execs usually have non-competes. say yeah, management. Yeah uh, management type, yeah, type yeah, yeah. you know so um, so that that's kind of what you're looking at uh, but really I guess the question is, is when you're signing an employment agreement look to see if there's one in there mm -hmm. the other time that it comes up is in your severance agreement so I have an interesting um, case that I worked on recently where there was no, the, my client called me and said, hey, you know, I'm gonna, I'm being reorganized out of my, my job and I have an offer from another competing company, can I go do that? And I said, well, do you have an employment agreement? And he said, I don't think so. And so he checked and you know, nope, he didn't have an employment agreement. And so I said, well, I think you'll be good. Well, all of a sudden a severance package shows up with a severance agreement that does have a non-compete. Um, and so it was attached to something else. It was attached to something else. And I hadn't seen that before, but I thought, well, it makes sense. Um, so the other, the other, the, the four or five factors you have to look at with regard to a non-compete to see if it's enforceable in Iowa. And every state's laws are different. Right. So in Iowa, because uh, a lot of times people think, oh, it's a non-compete, you can't enforce it. Yeah, because they say it's a right to work state. I was just going to say that. <laughs> I hear that all the time. Is people it, call me and where, they say, it's a right to work state. Yeah, I, where did that come from? Yeah. you have any idea? Well, yeah, so it is a right to work state. Okay. But that's not what, but it had, that has nothing to do with a non-compete. <laughs> 
<laughs> so right to work state means that you can quit anytime you want. You know? Is that what and, it means? And, yeah, okay. and, and if I'm the boss, I can fire you anytime I want. I just can't fire you for you know a wrong reason, obviously. Mm -hmm. So that's what right to work means. The non-compete is what happens after you quit or you're fired. I All mean, right. then what happens? Um, and so the, um, the non-compete, the factors we have to look at is um, the geography. So is the geography mm -hmm. reasonable? So for instance, if I'm working for you selling shoes, um, and maybe your store is only in the Des Moines area, then the geography should really be the De Des Moines area. It shouldn't say that I can't sell shoes anywhere in the United States or anywhere in the Midwest, because y it's not reasonably You're out of your tailored. territory, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. so mm -hmm. the court looks to see, is it reasonably tailored to protect your interest? Mm -hmm. Then the time frame, which we already talked about, right. um, and then uh, the type of work. So for instance, if I'm selling shoes, it can't say that I can't sell um, all clothing. Clothes, yeah. Yeah, because you only sell shoes. Um, and then is there consideration? Are you giving me something to sign it? So it, it is, was it attached to the job offer? Um, was it, did I get money for signing it? So in other words, if, because um, I, I also represent a lot of employers, and I explain to employers, if you're going to have somebody sign it, you have to give it to them as part of the job offer. Like, here's your, here's your job offer, but it includes a non-compete. And mm -hmm. so there's the consideration. Or um, if I'm giving you a, a raise, or in this case, a severance package. So if I'm giving you money um, and I'm giving you something and you sign it, then it's enforceable. Okay. So those are the things that we look at. Interesting. What if you have a, a specialized field mm -hmm. and you know, and your company is you're no longer needed or wanted right. uh, at your company? Uh, do you have the ability to, to jump and go to another company that offers the same type of thing? Yeah. So it depends on the non. If you don't have a non compete, absolutely. Oh yeah. If you didn't have but a non compete, but, yeah, but, but if, if you, you have, have a non, one, if you have a non compete, so so here's what I encourage people to do. Number one, have a lawyer look at it. Number two, if let let's say that um, I'm in some specialized field selling some IT product or something for you and you fired me <clears throat> because we got into a tiff and Jackie has a competing company and Jackie says hey Kim I think you're great come over here what what would make sense is that I take my non-compete and I give it to Jackie and I say this is what my non-compete says can you live within this um, and the reason for that is because sometimes what a gotcha. non-compete says is I won't I won't keep selling to your customers so I could probably go work for Jackie and I can sell to her customers Customers or to new customers, but I just can't for a year or for two years contact your Target people. the ones you already work yeah, with. Yeah, so okay. it really is dependent on the language in the non-compete. You really have to look at it to see what it says. And then lastly, th sometimes there's an option to buy yourself out of it. I mean, I, I have helped a lot of people, um, you know, so for instance, if Jackie is leaving your shoe company, and Jackie may come to me and say, look at this non-compete, I'm not gonna be able to work anywhere. And so I might say to Jackie, all right, Jackie, let, let's have some negotiations with Lou. Let's, let's see if for a couple thousand bucks, if you're willing to pay him, that you can buy your way out of it. And you know, I would say to you, now really, Lou, are you gonna really file a lawsuit against Jackie? You know how long that's gonna take? You know how much that's gonna cost you? It's mm -hmm. gonna cost you a lot. Right. Why don't you just take this 2,000, 3,000, whatever the number is, and let her buy you out of it, you know? Okay. So even if you put your name on the dotted line, there still might be some opportunity that you can always negotiate. Yeah. You can always yeah. negotiate. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're going to go work at a company, or maybe you have a, a contract that, that comes up. Maybe you have a renewal that comes up, and they say, okay, we need to renew something here, uh, and a non-compete shows up. Do you sign it right there, or do you bring it to a lawyer? Before, um, and, and what happens with the um, employer if you say, I want somebody to look at this before well, I sign it? Well, and that's always touchy, because then, you know, sometimes now you've been, you've got a little thing over your head saying, okay, this person might be litigious, or this person, you know, is mm. not a team player. So, uh, number one, you want to see whether or not, are they giving you something for it? In other words, are they going to give you a promotion? Um, are they giving you more money? I mean, what are you getting for signing this? And sometimes, you know, you can always go back to your boss and say, hey, you know, I just don't feel comfortable with this. Can we lessen it to six months? Can we lessen it to only this product? Can we lessen it to only these customers? So, you know, try you try, take a shot at trying to negotiate it. Um, you know, I'm all about, you know, if you need legal advice, go get it. Right. Um, and most lawyers, uh, if you call them up ahead of time and say, okay, what would you charge me to review this? They should be able to tell you. Maybe it's going to take an hour. So you know what it's going to cost mm -hmm. you getting into it. Because I know a lot of people don't call lawyers because they don't want a big bill. Right. Yeah. So call 
call the lawyer and just ask how much is it going to cost. Okay. All right. Best, Makes sense. Best advice there at all. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. But worth uh, looking over, it sounds oh, like. Oh, I think so. I think it, it, it's it's what you're going to be doing, you know, for a living. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think it's worth time. So, even though it's the, the right to work, uh, you yeah. watch out for the non nothing to do with it. It has <laughs> nothing to do with it. To do with it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so people have questions about this, as I'm sure many do. What's the easiest way to get a hold yeah, of you? Yeah, just give us a call at 279-2000. We offer a free consultation, so come on in and have a cup of coffee. Love it. Right. Thank you so much, Kim. Oh, absolutely.